Hello, I'm Bubba B and welcome to my pyjama tutorial. Today I'm going to be making a pair of pyjamas for my daughter. Uh, you can use the same method though to make pyjamas for children or adults. It's absolutely simple. I've made pyjamas for myself like this as well. Um, so what you'll need is some fabric to use for your pyjamas. You'll need an old pair of leggings or pyjamas of some kind to just to trace the pattern from. You'll need scissors, of course. Uh, some clips or pins, whichever you prefer to use. You'll need um, something to mark your fabric with, a couple of safety pins, and you'll need some elastic. Now, the elastic I've got here is about an inch wide, but um, you know, th there's no prescribed one that you have to use. So I've used sort of narrower elastic as well. And what you want to do when you're measuring your elastic is whoever the pyjamas are for, determine where you want them to sit, either around the waist or around the hips, and just measure that out to the right length with maybe about an inch or so overlap. And you can, you know, perfect that fit once you've actually got your pyjamas made as well. So what we're going to do is take our fabric that we're using and lay it flat on your cutting surface. And then if you lift up the edge, just imagine that's about the width that you need for a pyjama leg. Fold it flat on itself. So what we're doing when we're folding here now, it's quite important to remember that we're always going to be working right sides together. So the right side is the side that's going to be on the outside of your garment when it's finished. So fold it so you've got the two right sides of your fabric facing each other. So when you're looking at it like that, you're actually working on and seeing the what's going to be the inside of your pyjama leg. And then you've got this line along here is your fold line. Now, I'm not going to talk to you about grain lines and selvages and things because um, the way I look at it, we're making a pair of pyjamas. We're going to be wearing them around the house. You know, it doesn't matter if they're not perfect, if they're, um, you know, it's a bit of a practice garment for us as well. So um, just fold that in half. So it's kind of like roughly lined up and roughly neat and tidy and nice and smooth. Take your existing pyjamas, uh, fold them front ways in, straighten that along that long outside leg. Make sure you've got this shape around the bum area coming out nice and, uh, and flat as it should do. Take that long leg then and lay that on top of your fabric so this long leg is along your fold line, okay? And you need to make sure that you've got enough fabric at the end to turn a hem up on the bottom of the trouser leg and also enough at the top to make sure you can cut extra to allow your elastic casing to be folded over. Okay, and then what we're going to do is take our fabric marker and we're going to trace the shape of these pyjamas onto our fabric. Now, I wouldn't trace exactly along the line of the edge there because you need to take into account what we call your seam allowance. So your seam allowance is the little bit of fabric that is on the inside of the stitching. So you're not going to be stitching right along the very edge of your fabric that you've cut. So you need to cut your fabric a little bit wider than that to allow a gap between the edge of your fabric and your stitch line. So what we tend to see on patterns is about a centimetre and a half or five eighths of an inch. Um, but you know, one or two centimetres, whatever you're comfortable using. So what I would do is I would start from this crotch line here and just draw, you know, you can measure it if you want to, but I'm going to be quite casual today and just kind of go for it. Just draw a couple of centimetres away from the edge of that trouser line, all the way down the long leg, To the floor and then I'm going to go a little bit beyond the edge of the trouser leg there maybe two or three centimeters and then draw across the bottom okay and then back to the top we're gonna carry on that same line that same seam allowance what you've got to consider is if your existing trousers have got elastic in them they're going to have sprung back a little bit as the elastic pulls tight. So in order to trace this pattern, you just want to see if you could just pull that out straight and just see where that fabric ends up. And if you just kind of make a, a mental note of that or, um, you know, you kind of feel like you might need three hands to do this part. But just stretch that out and think, OK, right, I need to do it about there. Hold your finger there and just draw the line out to there. So your line here is going to come a little bit wider away from your fabric as it gets closer to the top of your fabric. Carry this on past the top of your waistband and as I said you want to leave it maybe two or three inches at the top there to allow for your fabric casing. Now this is how much you leave here will depend on how wide elastic you're using. I'm using quite wide elastic so I need to make sure that I've got enough there to allow for the fabric to be folded over the elastic so it needs to be at least twice 
the width of the elastic plus a little bit more for seam allowance, okay? Don't forget that cutting line is kind of going to be inside your garment and you'll neaten that up after you've sewn it all together anyway. Okay. So we now have two trouser legs. And what you might want to do is while it's laid out nice and flat on your surface here, is take the pins or clips and starting at the crotch, just pin all the way along there. So what you're doing is you're pinning the inside of the pajama leg. So it's from here down to the floor. And then we can take those over to the sewing machine and start sewing together. So now we're gonna sew our pajamas together. So you wanna place your fabric um, under your machine. And don't forget, we're gonna be sewing from the crotch here, down this inside leg, all the way down in a straight line. We're gonna use a straight stitch um, and I always tend to use a stitch length of about two and a half um, if I'm just doing general general sewing. Uh, I don't really worry about changing that too much. Now, depending on how much of an allowance you left when you cut your fabric out, you need to line the edge of the fabric up with the marking on your machine. So on your machine, you should have some little markings. If you don't, you can measure them and you can use a little bit of washi tape or something to, to mark on, on your grid here where your stitch line should be. So you line your edge of your fabric up with the marker that aligns to your seam allowance. Put your presser foot down and just use your hand wheel to turn your needle down into your fabric and just check. So if you left a one and a half centimetre seam allowance, just check that your needle is hitting your fabric one and a half centimetres away from the edge of your fabric. Okay, and once you've done that, you're ready to go. Do a couple of stitches. Hold down your reverse button. Go back a little bit, stitch again. And then just let it go stitch all the way along, taking the pins or clips out as you go. If you need to stop to take the clips out, that's absolutely fine. If you need to stop just to straighten yourself up and realign as you go in, that's fine as well. And um, just remember that you're not actually pushing the fabric through the machine. The machine, the feed dogs on the machine are pulling the fabric through. Your job is just to keep it straight. And I find the best way to do that is not to watch the needle, but to actually watch the edge of the fabric. Either watch the fabric um, against the edge of your presser foot or against the marks on your sewing machine, just to see that that's lining up nice and flat. And, and keep this bit of fabric in front of you nice and flat and smooth as well. I just think it helps. If, you, if you've got everything sort of bundled up and twisted in front of you here, it can be quite hard to keep straight. But if you've got this nice and flat and laid out in front of you, it really does make it easier just to let it slide through when you get close to the end again just do your reverse button okay lift your presser foot up pull your fabric off towards the back of the machine and snip the thread off the end so we've sewn now from the crotch all the way down to the end uh, all the way down to the hem we're going to do the same again with the next leg So I'm going to talk you through this next bit um, on video because it, when I read first read the instructions on making pyjamas, this bit really confused me. So you've got two pyjama legs at the moment and they're both inside out. So I want you to pop your hand through the top of one, grab the bottom and turn it the right way around. So you've now got one pyjama leg which is the right way out and you've got another one which is inside out. And it's inside out and you know that because you've got your seam allowance on the inside and obviously if you've got a a two-way print you've got uh, the right side the right printed side on the inside so take your right side leg and if you pop your arm through it grab hold of the bottom take your right side sorry your inside out leg and you're going to put the right side leg into the wrong side leg lining up the seam at the bottom as you do, pulling that back through and likewise just lining up the seams at the crotch there. Just stretch that out and make sure that those seams are lined up together nicely inside. You've got, 
Okay, and just to check that you've got it the right way round, if you go to the top of your pyjamas and just check your layers, so you've got wrong way out, right way, wrong way, right way. So again, like when we're folding, you've got the right sides of the fabric together. Those two bits are right sides together and these two bits are right sides together. Okay, and if you open that out now, what you can see is we're going to stitch the crotch seam, which is from the top here, which is the top of the waistband, all the way down and round and back up there. So what's a really good idea is to, first of all, get your seam in the middle where it meets and just make sure that's nice and lined up and then pop a pin or a clip of some sort on there just to hold that in place, just so you know that the middle of your trouser legs is gonna meet a nice neat line. If you want to pin or clip the rest of the way along here, you can, um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna be sewing in kind of like a U shape all the way down, round and back up. So using the same seam allowance as you had previously, put your fabric under the machine, press a foot down, needle down, again, just checking that that needle is one and a half centimetres or whatever your seam allowance was away from the edge of the fabric and go. So the start of this is really easy, you're just sewing in a straight line but then as you start to get closer to the crotch you realise that this all kind of bunches up a little bit and it gets a bit strange. So what you need to do is if you just keep the trouser leg over to your left hand side here <coughs> and just keep pulling that fabric flat in front of you. I would sew a little way, and then I would stop and kind of just turn it towards you again, just again, making sure this is lined up nice and flat. And as you get close to the middle, you'll need to take your pin or clip out. And what you might want to do is just make sure that your seams are all gonna lay flat. Um, it's up to you really which way you want to, them to go. We tend to fold our seam allowances towards the back, um, but at the moment you, you're probably not really distinguishing the front from back of these. Uh, so just make sure they're all folded neatly and flat and you're just going to slowly guide this along and turn it as you go to get that nice U shape. And then once you've got over that seam line you're fine. It's quite easy then just to go in a straight line all the way back to the top. now sewn all the way from one waist down to the crotch and back up the other side to the other waist. Now before we fold these out and have a look at what we've made, what I'm going to suggest you do is just do a little bit of reinforcement on the, uh, on the crotch here. So what I would do is just start about an inch either side of the crotch, pop the fabric back under your machine, pop your presser foot down, line your needle up with the existing stitch line or maybe just a millimetre to the side of it and just go over that middle part again. can do that a couple of times if you want. Um, alternatively, if you were going to be using an overlocker and then you, you might find that you've got the strength there, you don't need to do that. But all I've done is just done a second line of stitching. I don't know if you can see that. Just a second line of stitching, just a couple of millimetres away from there, just to reinforce that area. Okay, and now if you pop your arm in there again, pull that leg out. And then pull the other one the right way around. You'll see you've almost got a pair of trousers. Well done, you. Okay, so what we do now is have a look at the casing. So this is really simple. Start at the front or the back where your waistband seam is. And we haven't finished the seams on these trousers and I'm not really going to go into showing you how to do that. Um, probably do that in a different video because some people like to overlock, some people like to zigzag, some people like to use pink in shears. Um, but I would just spread that seam out flat like that. And what we're going to do is we're going to fold over about half a centimetre from the edge of the fabric and I'll pop a, pin, a clip on there. You may want to use pins. And then we just carry on doing that all the way around. 
Now you may find this easier to do on a flat surface. I'm obviously doing it so that I can show you on the video. But just going to fold that all the way around about half a centimetre. Put as many pins or clips in as you want to keep it all nice and together for you. And then what we're going to do is pop that under the machine. Line your needle up. Probably do it quite close to the folded edge on that bit just to keep that down. Because what we're doing is we're folding this over half a centimetre and then we're going to fold it over again to make the casing for our elastic. And then we're just going to sew in a straight line all the way around. This is really good practice for your uh, sewing nice and straight as well. So when you're do, using quite a narrow hem like this, is I like to use the um, sort of quarter inch marking, which is just going to be at the edge of your presser foot. So if you guide that fold of the fabric along the edge of the presser foot, you're going to really have some good practice at folding nice and uh, sewing nice and straight. And again, as you move around, because we're sewing in a circle, just keep pulling this forward so you've got a nice bit of fabric stretched out in front of your machine. We kept that going all the way around until we line up with our existing stitch from where we started. So now all we've done is we've just got a nice neat edge around the top. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab our elastic. Remember how wide your elastic is. If it's an inch you'll need to fold over just over an inch. If it's half an inch you know you may want to fold over sort of three quarters of an inch. So what you've got to imagine is that you're going to be feeding um, your elastic through this channel that you create when you fold this over. So you just need to make sure it's a little bit wider than your elastic. Um, so I'm going to go about an inch and a half because my uh, my fabric's about my elastic's about an inch wide. And again, we're just going to pop some clips on there. And what I would do at this point, because you might want to get this a little bit neater, is I would measure um, the the distance that you fold the, the width that you're folding over at each of your seam lines, your front and back. I would pin those, and then rather than measuring your seam all along, if you grab those two pinned ends and just pull that out, straighten it out and then you can just clip the rest. It sort of naturally folds in evenly all the way around then. And you can just pin the rest. Like so. Okay. Now this time, when we're stitching, what I would recommend you do is you want to stitch quite close to this inside edge. You don't want to be stitching... Um, You don't want to be stitching close to your folded edge because you need to be creating a channel for your elastic. So stitch quite close to this edge here. And what we also need to remember to do is to leave a gap to feed our elastic through. So I would start at one end of your, uh, start at one side of your seam and then maybe use a couple of clips to mark maybe a couple of inches. And that's where you want to leave a gap to feed your elastic through. So we're going to start at this pin at this clip, we're going to sew all the way around and we're going to stop when we get to this one. And again, it's entirely up to you how accurate you want to be in terms of measuring your casing and your waistband. Um, you may just want to have a practice go first and just go for it, or you may really want to get it right first time and, and measure, and that's entirely up to you. And just keeping that fabric laid out flat in front of the machine all the time. So I've folded my case in, I've got a little gap here to feed my elastic through. 
before we do the elastic what I'm going to do while we're here just practicing that exact same methodology but on a slightly smaller scale is we're going to go to the bottom of the trousers and we're going to do the hem so do exactly the same thing I would fold fold over about half a centimeter pin and clip that all the way around again as neat as you want to be I would put more more clips in more pins in to help you get it neat if you want to Now I do find when you're sewing hems or sleeves or cuffs that it's much easier to work on the inside of the hem. So you can see here I've got the, um, the pyjama leg is the right way round so the outside of the fabric is on the outside but I'm actually working on the inside so I've laid that down on my foot and I've, I've got this, um, you can imagine the, the whole of the, the, the trouser leg kind of opens up there in the machine. Then in exactly the same manner as last time just to hide that rough unfinished edge on the side there if you turn it over once more and I would just turn it over a centimeter this time um, sort of half an inch maybe turn that over and then just stitch all the way around again just to give a nice neat finished hem so the final thing to do is to put our elastic in so I've got my elastic I've got my two safety pins I'm gonna take a safety pin and pop it in the edge of the elastic and close it. That one is to make sure I don't lose the end of my elastic as I'm pulling it through. And then another one on the other end. And this is for me to use to guide the elastic through the channel that I've created. So grab your pajamas. I've got my two clips there marking where my gap was. I can take those off now. So I'm gonna feed the elastic in the gap in the channel and I'm gonna feed it to one side. Now, through the fabric, I can feel where the safety pin is, okay? So I'm gonna just grab hold of that safety pin and I'm gonna just pull this. Now, if I hold the safety pin at either end and I can just slide as much fabric onto that pin as possible, gathering it up as I go. And then when there's hardly any room left on the safety pin, I'm gonna hold the end of it and I'm gonna use the other hand to pull the fabric along you'll see the elastic is going in through the channel then and then I just repeat that as much as I need to until I get back to my gap or I can pull the elastic out the other end okay if you need to just stretch it out as you go that's why I put the pin on the other end so we don't lose that end of the elastic so now I'm almost there There it is. So, I have both ends of my elastic together. What I'm gonna do, first of all, is just check that my elastic is not twisted at all. Make sure it's flat all the way around with a nice thick elastic like I've used there. That's quite easy. Okay, now I've got my two ends. Ooh, almost lost one again now. Just pull that back through. What I'm gonna do is just secure these together using the safety pins. Take that one out. Use this one just to pin the two together. Again, just making sure that it's not twisted at all. It's quite a thick elastic this, so it's quite hard to get the safety pin through. Right, so I've got um, a, about an inch or so overlap on my elastic there. Now at this point, if these pyjamas are for you or for a little person in your life, you could ask them to try them on and just check how much stretch you've got in the, in the waistband there and whether you need to make it a bit smaller. If you need to make it a bit smaller, you just pull this through, just snip a bit off the elastic and again, just overlap it by an inch or so. So for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna assume that these are a perfect fit. So I've got my elastic overlapped here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew this elastic together with a zigzag stitch. So I'm gonna turn my 
stitch onto a zigzag. Um, I'm going to keep the length at about a two. I'm going to put my width at a four. Um, have a little play with this if you if you need to learn your own settings on your own machine. But um, this is not for presentation purposes or anything. It's just to secure this elastic together. And we're using a zigzag stitch just so it has a little bit of stretch in it in case it snaps at all. Okay, so it can be quite tricky depending on what elastic you're using um, to get this right. But just try and do the best you can to hold those two bits of elastic in place under your foot. And as soon as you put your foot down, um, it gets a little bit easier. So I would just sew a few stitches on that overlap. I'm actually going to turn it around and go the other way as well. Okay. So just secured that together with a, a little zigzag stitch, stretch it out, let it go, and then you close up this hole just by doing a nice little bit of stitching. You see you've got a gap in your, your stitch line there, so just put that under your machine stitch from there to there and you've finished. Okay, let's place that under there. Ooh. Don't forget to turn it off the zigzag stitch. Needle down, just line it up in that existing stitch line. Make sure your elastic is out of the way. You're not gonna stitch over your elastic. nice and neat and close to the edge there you go you have a pair of pajamas well done